I'm Panther. And I'm Nikki. And we're Woolly Elephants. <laughs> As it says there. So, <laughs> it feels weird saying that. I nearly want to say the Material Girls. Because <laughs> I say that so often. I just have it. So, welcome. We are actually filming in actual daylight. Real life daylight. Real life daylight. So you should get good colour. So <laughs> we're going to try and keep it relatively short. Mm -hmm. uh, so it doesn't take up too much of your time. Uh, and show you what we've been, what we've been up, up to. to. So, a bit different from last week. I don't think you get, none of the projects I don't think we showed last week. No. Are we showing this week? <laughs> nope. We've both got sidetracked somewhat. Oh, yeah. I've been busy. I've been um, recording tutorials. So, the projects I've been working on have been for the tutorials for always knitting and sewing. I know. And the, uh, what I've sewn for tutorials, I can't show because they're for the subscription. Top secret. They're for the subscription box or in the subscription box fabric. Mm. So, I can't actually show you those this week oh. so if you're interested in the subscription box we will leave links down below mm. um so what have you been making so i've been doing i've been knitting a project a uh, new king cole one i think we mentioned it's this king cole cardigan well i love this cardigan i love the look of that and it's pattern five six four eight it's in double knit and I particularly like it because it's good for the larger sizes and, you know, being a larger size. I... We're being not skinny minis in our, in, in our family. So I, I really, I really wanted to do this. So, um... Can we show the pattern on the back as well? Yeah. Um, it has got... In pastel as well. Is it is it two different patterns or just... No, it gives you the option for three quarter length sleeves or, oh, right. or yeah. long, or long sleeves. I'm doing the long sleeves. This, uh, this looks nice as well. A nice pastely one for the summer. Whereas I'm doing it in the colour, I'm doing this one in, in the colour in the pattern, which is, it's called Mixed Berries, shade 4487. It's King Cole Bramble, which is really nice. And this is where I'm at. You, you knit it all in one piece. So this, this is the fun bit. I'm, I'm filming a tutorial at the same time whilst I'm doing it. So I'm going up one of the sleeves at the moment. You increase every eight rows or something like that. I love it. I just love this colour. And the stripes. The stripes, yeah. Isn't it cool? So I measured it before. So you, I imagine you fold it in half. And that's just like up to my elbow. <laughs> <laughs> Basically up to my elbow. Yeah, so it's a tutorial that te it's going to take a while to film. Yeah, because I've got to knit the whole thing. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, it's it's really nice. The colours are lovely, and it's knitting on knitting flat on circular needles. Because in the in the pattern it says to start on straight needles and then progress into uh, circular needles. But my tension varies from where straight needles to circular needles. So does mine. Mine slacker on circular needles. Is yours? Yeah. So I did my swatch on circular needles. Um, so I'm going to do the whole project on circular needles to keep the tension even. And uh, knitting on circular needles straight is is it's the same as knitting on, on straight needles. On regular needles. On now, we were asked by a viewer if we could show uh, how to knit flat on circular needles. So Nikki's offered to do that as she's got her knitting with her. I've got mine in front of me as well, but Nicola's going to show you how easy it is to just knit flat on circular needles right i'll i'll do it now super quick while it's in my hand so you've got you you've got you have your your work right to the end of your needle like you would if it was on a straight needle and you've got your other needle this end so you put your your working needle in your right hand if you're right handed like me in it goes hold your yarn like you would straight needles and you will literally just knit across the whole row to the end and it will all move from here to here like it would straight needle. Pretend this cable isn't here. Yeah. So pretend it's two needles and the cable. It's getting used to holding it. Yeah, because it's which is some... different. So I will now knit this row while mum shows you uh, her stuff. Her stuff. <laughs> so you can see what <laughs> you can see how easy it is. <laughs> right, so I started, I, I got sidetracked from what I'd been knitting uh, last week because when we got all these wools, these bramble wools and these patterns in at the shop, at always knitting and sewing, just two it, I was just, I saw, I saw the pattern initially for this one. This is what I'm doing. We didn't initially have this yarn, this colour. Well, I said we need to change that because I want to do that. 
<laughs> so <laughs> make it happen. Yeah, make it happen. <laughs> so we got this one in on the next order. This colour that it's like a rainbow colour. I don't know. We go for rainbow things, but I just really like this. It's more of a subtle. A darker rainbow. Yeah, it's got more yellows and greens in it. Yeah, and the pattern is a short cardigan or a long cardigan. I haven't got the picture of the one on the other side because I've just taken a picture of it. Um, it's just on my on my computer, so I can. Uh, I was knitting it for myself, but so I can use it to show people as well in the shop. Here's have a looky. Got yarn on this needle, moving over like you would normally. Um, so I'm knitting mine. I don't want it that short because um, don't do short. I don't do short and I don't want it as long. The long one comes down to about here on there on the other side. I'm going, I think I've knitted it about two inches longer than this one. Yeah. Than this one. So I'm going a little bit longer than that. More so it just sits um, just below my waist, more mid, mid, midriff. Yes. Mid, midriff. Yes. Um, so that's what I'm knitting it in. So I have done the back. I'm, I'm knitting on one project. Well, nearly enough. I'm, maybe I'm knitting Don't on two projects. <laughs> I know. It's, this is not like me at all because I want this. I'm a pro. I'm what they call a process knitter. There's product knitters and process knitters. Product knitter, you knit because you really want the product. Yeah. Or a process knitter, which I typically am. I just like the knitting process more than anything and I'm not really too concerned about what I get at the end of it occasionally I want it to look nice obviously at the end of it but invariably I finish oh yeah isn't that pretty pack it up and start the next thing or it works its way to my house or it works its way <laughs> to your house there are some things I knit that I I love and I wear yeah all the time uh, but a lot of what I've knitted is, is in a pack or at Nikki's house so this <laughs> is the back this is the back this again is knitted so nearly all in one, not all in one piece, but the back is knitted with the sleeves. So the sleeves are knitted as part of it. And then each, obviously when you do the left front, it's, it includes the left sleeve. And when you do the right front, it includes the right sleeve. So you do need to be able to knit on circular needles to do this because, well, that's obviously the back. And then you've got a sleeve that comes Ooh. out here because I like the way the sleeves come straight out so that the stripes go downwards on yeah. the sleeves and then obviously there's another sleeve that's a whole lot of stitches on sleeve <laughs> so that was about 340 odd stitches by the time by the time uh, I'd got them all on because you get up to here and then you start increasing uh, out on both sides to get your sleeves and because it's a self striping yarn and because you're knitting it all in one piece Obviously, they've started off uh, narrower on the back. They've started off reasonably narrow, the stripes, because the stripes, the width of the stripes depends on how wide the thing is that you're knitting. And then as I've got up to the sleeves, because it's now stretching out over 340-odd stitches, they've gone quite narrow, mm -hmm. which I quite like, because it cool. makes it look like an added-on piece. Yeah. Like if you were sewing in a fabric and it's, it's a different fabric at the top, which I think is quite cool. And then, then again, now I've onto the fronts, it's quite wide stripes. Oh, it's going to be cool. Which I think is awesome. It's just, I'm loving that. And the border band is knitted on, so there's no there's no band to knit on afterwards. There's no buttons on this. You could put buttonholes down the, uh, if you wanted to. You could knit, you could put buttonholes in down here if you wanted if to, you because wanted. it's shaped on the front. I'm just starting out on the shaping now. But that you don't need to. But as you can see here, I do nearly all my knitting now on uh, circular, needles. circular needles. Now this is starting off on a shorter needle. So if you've got interchangeable needles, that's where your needle comes off. She you says can, that one doesn't want to. You need can change it. the size. <sighs> it's not going to work. If you can unscrew it, ah, there we are. If you can unscrew it, see these come off. So if you needed to switch, like I did, from 3 mil to 4 mil, or I'm doing 3.75 3 because my tension's slacker, so I'll go down a size. My um, size is worn off. Yeah, so <laughs> that you can then, you can take one needle off, uh, you can screw your new needle on, leave the other one on, Wait knit till the end, till you get to the end of your row, and then when you get to the end of that row, take the other one off, put your other new one on, and you've switched. Likewise with a cable. You can take your needle off, put your new cable, longer cable on, knit across, 
um, onto the new cable and then take your other needle off and put it on the other end. And they do come with like stoppers, these knit pro ones, so that it won't fall yeah. off the end. Higher, higher ones did as well. You had to buy them separately with the higher, higher ones. Did I? Yeah, you got little pandas if you remember. You bought pandas separately, yeah, little I stoppers little you could pandas. screw in the end. Well, these come with little stoppers with them. Right, so I'm on my last stitch. So here we go, last stitch, let's knit it. So there, we've gone from where it's from our left needle onto our right needle. And all we do now is turn like you would if it was a straight needle. Get your wool, get your, your needle again and carry on. That's it. It's that easy. It's that easy. It, the bit I think the hardest part is when you first start on knitting on when you're used to knitting on straights. The hardest part is uh, learning to because you've got the shorter needle in your knitting here. You've not got any stick sticking under your arm, tucking under your arm, whatever you do. Mm. You haven't got that in the way. Mm. I originally switched because the arm of the chair used to get in my way and I'd sit at an angle knitting like this, which wasn't good for my side, really. Mm. Um, it took me ages. Even when I was knitting on circular, when I started, I was still knitting over here. It took me ages to bring it back round to the middle. They're easy to shove in your bag. Yeah, I, I think I went circular because of practicality. Yeah. And of, of travel. Um, I used um, I used an interchangeable set a lot. So it was yeah. just easier for me, uh, instead of buying sh all the different sizes in straights and circulars, just to use circulars. Plus, the bonus, one of the bonuses is, if you are knitting two cardigans, two projects, you could be knitting a two jumper socks. in a cardigan, whatever, <laughs> yeah. two set, two pairs of socks, yeah, whatever. You can, you only need, and they're both on the same size needle, you only need one. You just need two cables, but you only need one pair of needles because you can knit on that one. Um, when you want to pick that one up, just screw the screw them off that one, put the stoppers on to hold it on, yeah. screw them onto your, back onto your other one, and then you can knit on that one. Which is knitting. ideal. And if you like knitting, if you're a passenger in a car and you're knitting as you're travelling, mm -hmm. this is a lot safer than having your long needles. <laughs> yes, yes. If you skewer yourself, you're only going to skewer yourself that much as opposed to that much. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and you're not likely to have your arms <laughs> up like this. No, I, getting I, in the driver's way. Yeah, yeah like me, my arms are tucked in. So, yeah, that was... That so, was that was... My wool was bramble, same as Nikki's was. Uh, but mine was in colour... Loganberry? Yeah, Loganberry. Yeah, Loganberry. Loganberry. I'm looking at it, I think it doesn't look like a Loganberry. It looks like a rainbow. It's called Loganberry, and that's shade 4486. You can buy both these wools, these yarns, and others, a couple of other colours as well, at Always Knitting and Sewing. And if we keep mentioning them, if you haven't met us before, we both... Well, I work actually work there full-time, and I'm a sewing tutor, and Nikki is a knitting the new knitting tutor. Mm. So we do an online uh, group, a, VI a VIP subscription group. It's called the Knit and Stitch Club. And you pay a subscription price. Uh, at the moment, it's £7.99 a month. And you get access to all our knitting and sewing and crochet tutorials. Uh, you've got to be a paid member to see them all. So if you think of Craftsy. Yeah. If you know what Craftsy is, we're, we're a bit like that. We've been going for about nine months and it's it's expanding and uh, I teach a lot of the projects, uh, sewing projects and Nikki teach, now teaching the knitting projects. These are what she's doing here um, okay. and there's, there's a few other ladies teaching crochet and sewing uh, as well. So it's worth going over and checking it out. Keep, yeah. Keeping us... Keep us busy. Keep us busy. <laughs> keep us in work. Um, they're proving really popular so it's cheaper than the price of a magazine. You get to you get us, and you get us, <laughs> and then you can come and watch us on here. And if you have any questions that you haven't asked us over there, if you want to ask us any questions, if you watch our tutorials, you can always ask under yeah. here. So while you're looking down below at the links, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification button, yeah. so that you can be notified whenever we post a new video. Because we did promise we'd be more we'd be more current, and uh, yeah. We are here. The only here. yes, we would have been here doing this two weeks ago, except I got no three weeks ago, except I got COVID. And then it was hard to And Nikki got a sickness bug. Yeah. And then the kids were off school. So I obviously after I had COVID and it affected my voice a lot and then for the week after I kept losing my voice. Um so we've just delayed it until today. But we're here. 
So I can speak without losing my voice now. Yay! Yay! And you're child free for Yay. a couple of hours. <laughs> Husband's, my husband, her father, is cooking tea, which is, you know, like, excellent. Excellent. Just just the way it should be. So, <laughs> next. That's one project. So what you what you're doing next? I am also doing a sock tutorial for always knitting and sewing as well. So I've been working on that. Where did I put the ball band? Never mind. So I put a, I put a, like a, a post on the, the page to find out which yarn I should do it in. And this is in the, is it Stuart Hillard? Stuart Hillard Stylecraft Sock Yarn. Stylecraft Sock Yarn. It is. This we will be getting in soon. Yeah. So I'm, I, uh, this one, I put a bunch that I liked, and this is the one that won. So I, I picked this one, and here's how we're looking. So if you want to learn how to knit socks, this is going to be coming. So if uh, in the VIP subscription. Yes, so teaching you from casting on from cuff down. So I'm going down the leg at the moment, um, and I'm doing it on DPNs, because the free pattern that comes with this is all done on DPNs. I sometimes think DPNs is the best way to learn initially. Yeah. Um, even You've got to get used to all the needles, but it's the best way to learn because your stitching, I think, is more even. Um, there's less pulling and stretching. It's screwing um, me on work, yeah. And then you're going to go on in the future and show on Magic Loop and yeah, my puff, toe up. Toe up. My plan is I'm doing these on dpns i'm doing them i'm going to do like short ankle socks this is my preferred way to knit them it's a lot easier doing the heel flaps and things like that and then on I'm, them. I'm going to do a pair and then i'm going to do another pair out of this hopefully fingers crossed um toe up on magic loop that's the plan so whether that comes to fruition things to look forward to so yeah that's that and that's basically all i've been doing between uni work life and everything yeah, because what are you studying? I'm doing my sociology and criminology. I was talking about it last time, weren't I? So, and I've just sat my first exam. Yay! And it had maths. And <laughs> I was like, she's not good at maths. Woo. But I did it. Yeah, brilliant. <laughs> right, hopefully, I'll get my result. Not next week, week after. This is a, a shirt. I obviously do more sewing, a lot more sewing these days. So, this is, I finally finished this um, a couple of weeks ago. This is the Trudy Tunic uh, by Style Arc. Uh, I've forgotten to pick the pattern up, but you can look that up. Oh, our screen's just gone dark. Why has it gone dark? I don't know. Let me just pause. Technology. Can you remember how many minutes that was on? Mm. Sorry. 19, I think. Our screen just went dark, which is uh, an adaptive brightness on my phone. So anyway, I've just sorted that out. I've forgotten where I was now. Talking oh, about sewing. Brush. Trudy Tunic by Stylark. I haven't got the pattern in front of me, but this is a dolman sleeved. Dolman sleeved. At which I took the dolman in quite a bit uh, because I found I got my arms to there and then I couldn't lift them up any further. I had to shorten the sleeves because the sleeves came to here so and the dolman was quite big. So when I put my arm up, then every time I lifted my arms up, my top's coming up, which is no good when you're at work. No, not really. So <laughs> this I made in polycotton. I was making it like um, a practice one. I've made one before in a dinosaur fabric, which was my awesome. first practice one, and then it was too big. So I've sized it, I've gone down the size, and it's still, I think, too big. I could still go down, um, I think, another size. Mm. I'm not a much of a, I'm not a dressmaker. I don't know a lot about dressmaking yet, which I'm uh, trying to address. Uh, since I've washed it, though, I'm happier with it here, because before I washed it, it was it stuck out quite a bit here. Oh. And I felt like I was this wide, you know, like this wide, <laughs> this wide, <laughs> because I thought there was too there was too much fabric there. But since I've washed it, they've obviously they've dropped down a bit. I'm still, if I make it again, I'm going to take a bit more, a bit more, in. a bit more off this bit. I'm all right round here, and I like all this. But this was in just in a polycotton called uh, Jessica Florals, mm. uh, available you know where <laughs> <laughs> down below, uh, and it's really comfortable actually. So it's nice, I like the colour. Yeah, and it's got a pleat down the front and a, um, it's got a yoke. Can you see? I don't know if you can see the yoke yeah, on the back. Yeah, the yoke there. There's a yoke on and the back. Pleat. An inverted pleat. So I'm quite happy with that. I'm, I'm quite uh, happy with doing shirt collars and things like that. So uh, I perfected that first. So while I was 
instead of remaking this again, I was going to make this again, but I've been looking at patterns online. I've tried other patterns but before and being uh, a bit more generous, let's say, in the boobicles area. <laughs> the boobicles. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get patterns to fit you right. Um, it's hard. It's, it's hard work. You, you, you try and get them to fit you, you back, make them to fit you here and then they're like a tent. Um, or they so, ride up at the front. Or they ride up at the front, or they pull under your arms, or or whatever. Anyway, so I've been looking online. I'd I'd looked at cashmerette before, um, but I've gone back and had a look, and I thought they had a three for two on patterns, which obviously tempted me to go back and look at them again. Now she makes they make patterns for women with big boobs, basically. Boobs. You don't have to be a big woman, but they, they design them with for the fuller bust so i say whether you're big or whether you're small but if you've got a fuller bust so um it just shows how to do the proper full bust adjustment and if you need to do that uh so but i've just been spent the entire day today i bought them in pdf format because i don't think they're in england she sounds english but i don't, but not, I don't think they're in england um so I, went, I ordered the pdf so something like 40 something pages to print off to, to stick together Yuck. but once you've done it you've done it and if you do totally mess it up you can print it out and and do it again i'm just going to show you the shirt that... with many swear words oh i put my back out oh dear uh, my back goes out very easy it doesn't happen very often but when it does and literally i had all those sheets of paper laid out on the floor mm. uh, i'd done so many stuck them together you know you cut them stick them together with a glue stick it's not hard it's just time consuming and when I kneeled, I'm just, I was kneeling down and just, I'm not designed to kneel down anymore. <laughs> I leaned forward and I just felt my back go on the one side and I thought, oh, flipping heck. You were kneeling and not meant to be. No, so that was fun, <laughs> getting back up. And Anyway, I've got it done, put together, spent, I think I must have spent most of the morning putting it together. And then I thought, well, I'm not going to cut it out because... I don't want to. If I mess it up, I don't want to print that out and have to stick it again, again any time soon. So then I've traced it all, which is what they recommend anyway. I've traced it all in the size that I wanted. I've actually graded it from... I, you put your sizes in on their website. It says it gives you a rough idea straight away. And you put your you put your high bust, your bust, your waist and your hips measurement in. And then it comes back and tells you, we well, should start off. And it, she does it in cup sizes as well. Mm -hmm. You should start off, uh, I think it was a 16 to a 20 for my waist because that's my problem is my waist yeah. being bigger and an 18 for me for my hips so I'm getting sort of you know I'm, I'm like go out and, woo. <laughs> and then in and so anyway I've managed to looking at the finish size grade it onto just a 16 and then an 18 I've not done that before so I thought I'll have a go at that before yeah so I've got it I spent the entire day doing that Putting the PDF together, planning the drawing and tracing the pattern, cutting that out in between, uh, you know, uh, tottering around, trying not to lean over because it, it flipping out, Oops. and then cutting out the fabric. I think I finished cutting out like as Nikki turned up nanoseconds as Nikki turned up tonight. <laughs> so what I am doing, it's called. This is the lady that that whose company it is. She looks very similar build to me, I think. Mm. She's a bit bigger up top than me, but she looks very similar build to me. And to listen to her talk in the videos is, is hilarious. She's very uh, very down to earth and she just explains everything so well. That's but that's the shirt and it's shaped and it's got princess seams in it. You can't see it on that. She's wearing a chambray, but they are. That gives you an idea. I thought, you know, throw it out there. Just, you know, don't do something easy. I've done shirt collar, so I should be all right with that and cups. But then there's princess themes. There's all these panels. Yeah. So I fancied Fun challenge. having a go at that. So there was a lot of pieces to cut out. So I've chosen to do. I'll link. Uh, I'll link the cashmere down below and the shirt, so that if you fancy having a go, if you are built similar to me or bigger, or this is the fabric. That's a sleeve. She gives you two different sleeves, um, uh, size sleeves as well for a a regular bicep and a, a larger bicep as well. Oh, that's good. Which is good, so you can size for that as well. So I'm doing it in this cheetah fabric. I just love this. When this came into the shop, I had to have this. We've got it with a black background, a, like a dark green background and a white background. But this black one said to me, yes, buy that now. Spokes to you. Buy that now, because I love cheetahs. 
Um, so I wanted a cheetah top. So I just uh, it's taken me longer to cut it out than it probably would normally because I wanted to make sure everything, the pattern was the right way on everything. You know, like when you've got your collar, you need to make sure it's this way so they're stood up right. And when you, if you lift the collar, they're the right way up when you lift it up and on your cuffs and everything really like that. think about it. <laughs> so I had to think hard about that to make sure it was right. So, so watch this space. Yeah, it'd be fun. So Can't for, wait to see that. So for that, so I've enjoyed doing that. I also bought another shirt pattern. I've printed them out. This is a more plain shirt pattern, this one. Uh, that one's made in flannel. This one's made in satin. But this is a more typical, standard shirt pattern. This one would be easier. And I have lots of shirts like this. The ones I buy in, I buy from the shops, are all like this. Mm. So I thought, I'll have to have that one. And then for my free one, I got a jeans pattern because I struggle a lot to get jeans to fit me right. I can't never get them to fit me because I've got a bigger waist. Um, I buy them, you have to buy them to fit your waist. And then they're too big on my backside and my yeah. legs, especially my legs. <coughs> or you buy them, <coughs> excuse me, to fit your weight, your legs and your bum. And then you can't breathe. And you get this giant muffin top. I have to buy them to fit my hips because my hips are larger than my waist. Yeah. And then I have, I'm forever pulling them up. Forever. So I want to learn how to make my own jeans. And then I, for the first time in my life, maybe I'll get a pair of jeans that actually fit properly. It'd be amazing. And so if I can do that, and then I can do it. And then she can learn how to do it as well. So. Are you going to show your socks? Socks. Knitting. Socks. This is my other knitting project I've been working on. I thought I'd start a pair of socks. This is my hand dyed yarn. I hand dyed this quite some time ago, probably like four years ago, one of my earlier ones. So I'm doing a shorty sock for this one, just ankle socks. I wear a lot, quite a lot of these where you knit the rib and then I only knit about five or six rows round here before you go on to the heel flap and shaping. Um, and this is my preferred sock, I've got to admit, at the, at the moment. And I'm knitting in my not preferred way of Magic Loop. I seem to be knitting a lot Magic Loop lately, just because I seem to have a lot of these needles. Might as well use them. Uh, but I do prefer DPS. knitting on DPNs, I've got to admit. Um, as much as I protested last time that I hated knitting on DPNs, I'm actually quite enjoying it. It's the cable management um, that drives me nuts. <laughs> when you're twisting stuff. Yeah, it drives me nuts on Magic Loop. But, you know, they were there next to me, so I've done it. And it's, you know, once you knit, when you're just knitting in the round, it's easy enough. I just find it, it, it a bit annoying, the cable. Uh, so I should have that first one finished. Not too long. Not too long. So once you know how to do, learn from Nikki how to make them, if you don't already, you'll be able to make your own mm. ankle socks. I've made about 60-odd pairs. When I, knitted, knitted ones, socks. when I do my toe-up ones, when I do my toe-up I'm going to do them like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the better way to do them, isn't it? Mm -hmm. I've um, I've knitted about sixty pairs all together. So, but wow. some of them are starting to wear. And some of them, obviously, about half of them have gone as gift presents to other people. Um, so I'm ready for some new ones. And it's not like I'm short of sock yarn. I've got so much sock yarn; it's ridiculous. So it's about time to get knitting some. <laughs> and they're in my lovely tub that Nikki crocheted. I did, yes. Did t-shirt yarn that, wasn't it? Yes. You so, cycle t-shirt yarn. Yeah. <laughs> so it just fits a cake of yarn in. Just nice that. And because it's quite heavy, it sits there without moving. It keeps it all together. It does. So that's that. Have you got anything else? No. Oh, I bought this. If you live in the UK, in, to the works, I went down to the works. We've got one in town. And I got this for jelly rolls. Jelly roll quilts, the classic cake collection for a fiver. I thought that is a bargain. They've got some nice patterns in there. Because there's a Christmas jelly roll that I've seen at the shop uh, by Moda. It's all sparkly glittery and I just fancy having just fancy having a go at a jelly roll project because I'm not a, I'm not really a quilter. I've done bits. I like that birdie one. Um, yeah. Let me find that. This one. I like my dogs. I like the seagull. Yeah. I think that's a seagull there. I like that one. I was looking at that one yesterday. I think that's quite cool. But I quite fancy doing one for Christmas. Um, I quite like this. It's all like dressed and plate type stuff. I've yeah, never done that, but I fancy doing that. I've got a template that I got free on a magazine. Mm -hmm. You were saying the same, weren't you, that you'd got? Yeah. Um, so that's what I plan on doing. So, yeah. And I'm just going to carry on with these. So what have you been doing? 
all you lot out there watching us, yes, um, tell us your projects. Tell us what your projects are. Or your uh, plans. And what, <laughs> yeah, your plans and what you're planning to make and um, what difficulties you have maybe with knitting on straights or on circulars. on circulars that we might be able to help you with. So, now we've covered all that, we're just going to have a bit of jibber-jabber. Jibber-jabber. We're going to have a book section. Yes. What you're reading. Yes, because I've um, I've been reading quite a bit and I've brought a book that I've been reading and it's completely bonkers. This is the book. Just, we'll just That's hide just my, um, mine. my glamorous uh, bookmark, which is a piece of paper from work. So this is my book. It's The Redemption of Philip Thane by Lisa Byrne. Um, this is a... Um, it's a Regency romantic comedy for fans of Bridgerton. Now, I like Bridgerton, so I thought, yes, I'll read this. Now, on the back, I'll just read you this sentence. Bridgerton meets Groundhog Day in this rip-roaring Regency comedy for fans of Julia Quinn, Jane Austen and Georgette Heyer. I think that's how you say her name. Mm. Oh, it's bonkers. He's, he's literally stuck, this man, I'm guessing this is Philip, on the same day over and over again and he's basically trying to win over th this girl who has literally no interest in him whatsoever at all and he's obviously decided that she's the one so he's, he's going to try and win her over and that's it yeah and he's um and it talks about the ton and class and all the lardy dar stuff and i'm on page 99 so it's a good read so far so far do you, so re good. Do you recommend it and when I start, when I when I was reading it first, I honestly I will tell you the truth, I did not read the back. Mm. I bought it because it said the lady who wrote Bridgerton record says one of the mo most exciting historical writers, Julia Quinn, author of Bridgerton. So I thought, okay, I've read all the Bridgerton books, you see. So I was like, okay, if she says it's good, it must be good. Yeah. So I didn't read the back. So I'm sat here reading it going, and then it it repeats the day. So if you've obviously seen. Groundhog Day, it, the same day just repeats over and over mm. again. So I, I'm sat there reading it going, I'm sure I've just read this. <laughs> <laughs> and then I thought, I better read the back. So I read the back and went, makes more sense now. <laughs> so yeah, that's my latest book. Yeah, so what are you reading? Tell us down below what you're reading. <laughs> Recommend some good books for us to read. Now, I'm a sucker for teen romance books, yeah. teen uh, supernatural horror books, anything like that. It, it, it's just such Fun. easy reading without anything too graphic yeah uh, there's nothing graphic in it you know if you watch the teen american series and things on the telly which i tend to do they're, they're all pretty good clean fun yeah with just references made to things so i have literally over the last few weeks just sat and read through the series of five books of this sarah snow i love these i'm gonna have to the, look for them the awakening she's like a human that sort of comes yeah. into a um discovers like the supernatural the supernatural beings type world there's werewolves and vampires and and a battle between them and um it's obviously a romance story involving her and then there's two fellas werewolf fellas oh, and it's it's just it just sucked me in and i just i think i bought the first two and then the next three they offered me on an offer on on kindle because i'm reading them on kindle so I've just downloaded another one in her books that I'm going to give give a go. So if you're if you're like not a teenager like me, but you like your teenage novels, especially the supernaturally type stuff. Well, I like them. I was uh, normally I read crime. They were only a couple of pound each as well. Yeah, I normally I normally read crime or teen. Mm. Sometimes I'll read that. It's escapism. I like yeah. these because it's not real. Yeah. It's escapism, and it just takes you away from everyday life. And I, I like um, Sophie Kinsella and yeah. th those kind of authors too. Um, but I, I, um, I went through. I go through phases of what what I'm into reading, and in the moment, I just wanted something lighthearted. So that's yeah. Well, that's why, why I, I that. yeah why I read these because I normally like Martina Cole type stuff and crime yeah. and and. Um, Tess Gerritsen. I've read practically everything Tess Gerritsen's done. I like all their stuff, but I wanted something to just fantasy. Yeah. Not not sex fantasy, but fantasy fantasy. fantasy world. Yeah. I like all the because we like the, the program, the series. Our favorite series is my favorite series is Supernatural. Supernatural. Yeah. Um, it's all about killing de <laughs> demons and monsters and <laughs> things like that. So anyway, that's where we. I, I'm going. Yeah. Down for that. I'm um, looking at. 
I've been reading a lot of Philippa Gregory's books for the War of the Roses. I really like that with all the women, you know, the Queen, uh, the Queen of the Rose. I, I can't remember, but I've read them about three times now, so I think I might like them. Uh, but I've been looking at getting a subscription box for reading because. I've been doing a lot more. I like reading physical books. I can't. I can't. I can't do it on a, a screen. It just. Doesn't, I've got used to this now. Just doesn't do it for me. I, I've got to have it in my hand. Plus, I'm a collector. I like collecting physical things. Yeah. Well, I have old <laughs> Tess Gerritsen's books, but I just don't have the space anymore. Um, yeah. Dinner's ready. Just better wrap this up. So I've um, I've been looking at this one called A Box of Stories, where apparently it's it's all authors stories that aren't you know they're not the massive ones and you can you can pick when i was looking on the website you can pick you know genres like crime sci-fi uh teen uh but i've I, there's one that's just just surprise so i think we're going to order one of them and if i order one i'll do an unboxing so it can be fun i'm just going to show you if i can find it on your, on your library a set of books that i've read that me i found hilarious I've been listening to. I'm on book three. I I listen to them on Audible, not on not on here. Um, I just want the picture. You try and get a picture, and it won't. Oh, it's, I've, it's, I've got it on my Audible. Jodie Taylor. I love Jodie Taylor. If on Audible, especially not so much by reading, but on audio books, the lady that narrates is. I just think makes it hilarious. It's. Um, <laughs> She's gonna start reading to you. It's from the. It's called the Saint Mary. It's a series from the Saint Mary's Chronicles. So I think this is book three. Yeah, a second chance. But all the the things are like. And that. it's about this this lady who goes to for this librarian type job, and it's it's sort of not what you expect. It's about time traveling, and going back through history to chronicle history. But it is hilarious the way that she's re she writes them. Um, I think this is the first one. Is absolutely that's it. Just one damn thing after, after another. another, and there's about thirteen or fourteen. There's a couple of short stories in between, and now they've they, she's done a spin-off series about the time cops mm. in it now, which is where her son goes into, and it's hilarious. Check it out. It is good. She it is proper really makes good. me giggle. When I was at the chippy uh, every morning, when I was setting up, that I just listened. That's what I listened to every morning, and I read through all of them. Well, listened through all of them mm. in literally no time. And the author, the the uh, the lady reading it makes it yeah she is so good so i highly recommend having a look at that if you like a jolly romp it's good <laughs> <Different. Anyway. laughs> we're gonna wrap this up i hope you enjoyed my uh, glossy box review yeah it was good as well i'm gonna at least get them for a few months and i'll uh, there's another one i've got called becoming box task box tan box ta i can't remember but i'll tell you next time another unboxing that's something completely different and i thought i'll i'll show them on here because mm -hmm. uh, I just wanted a couple of subscription boxes to see how they went. Yeah. And I thought I'll share them on here with you. Good fun. So we're going to wrap it up now. Yes, go on. And go and get our tea before it goes cold and we'll get in trouble. So <laughs> until next time. Bye. Bye.